Welcome, you're watching The Date. I'm Abha Bakaya and today I'm going to be meeting Amit Berman of Dabur who literally has his hands full these days, not only with the family business but also with his own venture, Light Bite Foods. We get chatting to him on how he's keeping pace with the rapid growth in his businesses. Amit Berman is part of the fourth generation of the Berman family. Founders of one of India's largest consumer good companies, Dabur. Amit is one of the youngest members of the family to have risen the ranks of the group so fast and is recognized for branching out on his own and successfully creating the foods division of the group with real juices, today which make up close to 17% of Dabur's top line. As vice chairman of Dabur, we ask Amit about his vision to take the company forward and also about his latest venture, Light Bite Foods, which is a combination of casual dining restaurants like Punjab Grill and Fresco, as well as quick service brands like Wraps and Street Foods of India. Dabur has always really encouraged uh, members of the family to go out there to uh, build their own businesses and you know, display their entrepreneurial skills. But when you first decided to venture out on your own and that too into a new category like food, were there any murmurs of surprise? Well, I think the reason for the same were very simple as you correctly said, you know, we were professionalizing the company in a way. Uh, I had come before that, but when I was in the company as such, uh, learning the parts of the company, be it manufacturing, be it operations, finance, marketing, I went to each and every department but it was too large for me to handle it and I didn't want to go in and go into one department as such because there's no then, you know, I wouldn't develop to be an entrepreneur or to, you know, handle bigger businesses as such. So at that time, uh, you know, I was always being passionate about food and I saw an opportunity in the juice segment and the opportunity was very clear because you know when you're living abroad you usually uh, tend to have a glass of juice in the morning and if you wanted to replicate that here it wasn't possible because you would get those tin juices with uh, a lot of preservatives and you know all brownish looking stuff coming out of an orange juice tin uh, so the opportunity was clear that uh, you know Indians like to drink uh, juices because there is a juice wala in every market and there's no other hygienic way of doing it uh, so therefore, we decided to, uh, you know, we hired a machine, uh, put it up in Nepal, started testing out different juices like orange, mango and pineapple and instantly it was a hit. So that started the food division for me. But what were also some of the learnings for you as, um, you know, as somebody running a business in terms of managing uh, some of these new equations, costs, people, risks, uh, what were some of the things that you learned during that initial phase? See, the learning uh, in any business is that, uh, you know, your customer is always right and you, you are only there because of your customer. So, you have to get the right product for the customer which he likes and the right price. So, I think we learned that in a, in a, in a way because when we started the juice business, it was the unsweetened category uh, as such, which today we have it under active. But the bigger market was there for the sweetened category because people in India, you know, if you if you look at the customer, how consumer, how they use the juices, they put orange juice and they put sugar in it, and have it because they don't like the bitter taste as compared to the European counterparts. So we started sweetening the juices uh, for under real, and that was a bigger brand. Now, of course, the unsweetened category developed a little bit further later with the you know healthy. Uh, 
healthy people want to, people want to be healthy or perceived healthy and they want to drink our sweet and juices and that category is also built as a large category but the biggest bigger category is the real sweet and category right so you know when uh, when you started out on your own a lot of people turn around and say that yes it's a success story but uh, you know you're the backing of a behemoth like dabur and a you know century old family business it must have been simple or it must have been a lot easier than it would be for an, an average entrepreneur mm-hmm. you know how would you answer that i mean i know that of course financial backing is one thing but in other ways well there are good uh, good and bad to yeah. the, that uh, statement you made the good thing is that of course the financial ba- uh, backing was there uh, of course the infrastructure was there uh which i could use in terms of r and d in terms of people in marketing in sales for the <coughs> bad thing is that you know uh basically that uh, in in learning like if i was using the same distribution system right. which i did i started getting a lot of uh, products back because again our distribution system was not uh, w- could not handle uh, short shelf life so i had to start building a new distribution system all together so that was the learning but i got a lot of rejection a lot of losses coming uh, from there so similarly i learned the same thing in marketing that there are different ways to advertise or promote your product as compared to a fast moving consumer products and in a in a thing like uh, in board meetings and so on so forth you know because being a family member you you probably we got Uh, I probably got hammered more than any other, uh, you know, professional coming and uh, presenting uh, because you know you don't finish your work at your workplace. It comes back to your uh, dining table. So uh, you know, so you know, you're thinking, working uh, all the time, even after you come back. seems to be a lot more pressure as well right there's this a constant lot, lot more pressure yeah of course as you said there's constant accountability in a sense because you're constantly talking about it and having to to be answerable to some extent yeah and also because you know a large a family our family is got all of different moving parts in terms of brothers cousins so everybody is looking at you exactly that, you know what's going to happen here is he going to succeed is he going to fail what is going to happen you know so and and that's what I wanted to ask you like how do you manage family relationships in in such a large business because okay um you know what happens if um, or or what is the sop if let's say somebody ventures out and doesn't succeed you know so that's that's the reason we want people to venture out and succeed rather than uh you know do businesses in dabur and i think i was the last one in the family who actually did a business in dabur and then it got we got i merged it in dabur and and i went out and did something else the reason is that you know you cannot hire or fire a family member yeah. so it's very difficult because everybody has their qualities and everybody has you know some of their drawbacks and you cannot judge everybody you know same but in a business you need to judge everybody same so from that point of view the reason we professionalize is the company that look you know this company is sacred this is where you know all our dividends all our money and everything comes out of so you have enough money in your private hands so you go out and do something on your own right. where nobody has to judge you and from the family and if one of the family members or a group of family members wants to invest with you so be it okay that's up to you so like right now in my new business of light bite foods i don't have any family member right. which is uh, in partnership with me i i run it on, on my own so you know you're actually one of the you know younger members of the dabur family that's actually managed to achieve a lot in just over a decade so you know when you had that success with with foods and brought it back into the fold and took on your new role at dabur How did it feel for you personally? Was it a huge um, feeling of success, of achievement? Yeah, accomplishment. Yeah. I would say. I think. Well, it was a mixed uh, emotion because, of, of course, when you know you're running the business and it's so close, uh, or, you know, to your heart. But then, as a baby, you you know grown it to a certain level, and to nurture it, you want to put it into a bigger organization where it can now yeah. grow to a much much bigger height. Of course, feeling of success was there. 
feeling that you know what you created is something that you know the whole family has is proud of and you know is you know and it's good good for the, the entire business as such and today food is about 16 17% of our top line of our whole dabar business so that is some success from of course <laughs> family is still very much involved in guiding the vision of the company or you know its strategy going ahead even though it's very professionally managed right. as you're at the helm what is the kind of future you see for dabar and you know how do you also plan to keep it evolving with times for instance signature brands like a chavan prash or a hajmola who've been around like yeah. you know forever how do you keep them you know relevant so you know as the vision of the family of myself i see dabar as a healthcare company and more and more going into the healthcare because that's where our forte is our forte is from ayurveda and you know link a lot about you know herbs and medicines and therefore from that point of view i would see dabar to be in that focused in that area of course fmcg personal care and all is a large part of the portfolio but there's a lot of competition there with the multinationals uh, exactly. in that portfolio so <clears throat> we should be number one in healthcare and there are various things which we are doing to be there as number one do stay tuned we'll be back in just a moment there are opportunities out there all over the world we have now you know franchise location in singapore uh we are opening up uh, three in abu dhabi we are opening up uh, one in bangkok 